Last episode, we spent 34 million on a potential midfield superstar, kicked off our Champions League campaign with a win and got revenge over Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. And in today's episode, we might be about to uncover the very next Thomas Muller. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. And we're going to be starting out with your comments. Now, I've often noticed that Danish players tend to thrive in the Bundesliga, so here are a few suggestions for some signings. Andreas Skovolsken, very underrated player in my opinion, shows great potential and could be a great backup or even a future starter in Cam or the wing position. Mads Bidstrup, a great talent, not much else to say, but I think he would be a great fit. Moritz Schergaard, another great talent, but somewhat similar to Bidstrup. I would say it's an either-or situation. Victor Nelson, probably the best centre-back I've used in the career mode this year. Doesn't have the greatest growth in early seasons, but with great form he'll have, he's bound to pick it up. Elias Jollert, probably the most exciting young fullback in the world at the moment, in my opinion. I would be surprised if he doesn't get picked up by a huge team in the next few years. Thomas Christensen, another centre-back, but probably my favourite suggestion. Might not be better than Victor Nielsen, but he has a huge presence with his height and leadership. And Mads Hermansen, not much to say. Great goalkeeper, great talent. Maybe the next Peter Schmeichel. Okay, so there is a hell of a lot to unpack there. Thank you so much for that wonderful comment. Loads of suggestions. Let's get started with this man, Andreas Scott Olsen. Now, to be fair, I have used him in a previous career mode, and as you can tell from his all-round stats, he is a pretty good player. And at 78 rated, and with him being 23 years of age, plus having the versatility to play on the right-hand side of midfield, and in a central attacking midfield position, plus having absolutely lightning pace, he certainly would add another dimension to my attack. But as I've mentioned before, bearing in mind that I do play this more narrow 4-2-2-2 formation, plus the fact I've got the likes of El Nash, Christoph Baumgartner, of course my best player in Danny Armo, and the on-loan Xavi Simmons, all whom can play in that central attacking midfield position. I think Scott Olsen could be a great suggestion, but perhaps someone I might want to look at at the start of next season. Now at 20 years of age, Kajer is another one who's got incredible potential, but as you can see, he's already been snapped up by Newcastle. So unfortunately, he is someone I'm going to have to remove from my shortlist. But this man, Mads Bidstrup, he now plays for RB Salzburg, our sister team. And it would make 100% sense for him to potentially make the move across to the German Bundesliga League to see if he can play football at a slightly higher level. Another player to look out for, perhaps in January or at the start of Season 2. Now, I've mentioned my concerns and my frailties at the back so far this season. And the likes of Victor Nelson and potentially this man, Thomas Christensen, could be the ones to potentially plug the gap. Although, looking at the pair of them, with them only being 71 rated and 77 rated, they aren't going to immediately come in and impact my starting 11. But once again, two young players who could realistically make the move to RB Leipzig in this career mode and in real life, and two players to keep an eye on as the career mode progresses. And with Elias Yellert obviously making the move to the Premier League at Aston Villa, he's another man who unfortunately I'm going to have to remove from my shortlist, as realistically he's not going to be able to join RB Leipzig at this point in time. And that finally leaves the goalkeeper Mats Hermansen playing for Leicester City, the Championship Leicester City at the moment and with me having my struggles with this man Peter Gualacci so far this season with him not living up to the lofty expectations that I had of the 33 year old at the start of the season perhaps at just 23 years of age he could be another very exciting talent and another realistic signing that potentially I might want to consider looking out for as the career mode progresses. Now on to the next comment, class episode, Danny Armo performing just as he does in real life. Now first and foremost, thank you very much for the compliment, I do appreciate it, and I do appreciate all of your comments and your views so far, so please do keep them coming. But there can be no doubt that this man, Danny Armo, does have that something special. He is by a million miles the best player in my team, and pretty much everything creatively comes through this man. Yes, it doesn't really reflect his stats so far, as he has only scored two goals, and he is yet to find the assist charts but with a 7.32 rating in the Bundesliga and with him scoring arguably what could be the goal of the season in the last episode with an incredible diving header from the edge of the box there can be no doubt that I have to keep this man Danny Almo fit for the foreseeable future and I have to do everything I can to try and get the best out of him if I want to be successful this season however on the other side once this season ends please do not sign Xavi Simmons that it would be highly unrealistic and would kill the career mode well to be fair I've got to be honest he's actually not even done anything that would warrant me trying to sign him on a permanent basis. Yes, he has only played six games so far, but in all of them, he's not really done much to try and secure a spot in the starting 11. So much so that, as you can see, I have decided to replace him in the starting 11 by this man, Elmas. And with Elmas already scoring three times in just six appearances so far in this season, and with Xavi Simmons yet to find the back of the net, he can have absolutely no excuses whatsoever. However, I've got to be honest, moving away from the talk of all of my attacking players, you will see, looking at the Bundesliga, that it is defensively that I'm having a few struggles. Yes, I have conceded the same amount of gold as Borussia Dortmund in second place, and I've conceded less than Bayern Munich, who seem to be the outlier, conceding 11 goals in just six games so far. All of the remaining top eight teams have conceded less goals than me. Now, I do have to 
admit, obviously, I am playing quite a high aggressive line here with this Gagan pressing system, which might mean that we might leave some gaps in defence. But with a back four, all of whom are rated almost in the 80 bracket, I thought we would have been slightly better defensively. Added to the fact that one of my best players in the entire team and one of the most experienced players in the entire team, the leader of men and my captain, Willie Auburn, is one of my highest rated players at 83. I'm still scratching my head as to why we are conceding the amount of goals that we are. However, on a little bit of closer inspection, despite Auburn clearly being the highest rated defender, you can see that in terms of his pace stats are being only 58 rated. That does not fit particularly well in this Gagan pressing system, especially one that is pushing so high up the field. And with Lukeba starting to knock on the door of the starting 11, scoring his first goal of the season against the German Giants by Munich in our very last game, do I need to consider making a massive bold call here and trying to see if this man Lukeba can start to show that great potential and potentially look to displace this man Auburn in my starting 11. So once again, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Should I stick by Auburn and my captain and keep him at the heart of my defence for the foreseeable future? Or should I drop him to the bench altogether, bring in Lukeba into the starting 11 and try and see if I can pair these two young Frenchmen to form the foundation of my defence for the rest of this career mode? Once again, let me know down in the comments what you think. However, after securing a fairly routine win against young boys in our opening game of the Champions League, it is time for us to get back to the football and we are going to be kicking off this episode with a titanic clash at the Red Bull Arena as we are going to be facing off against the Champions League favourites and the current winners in Manchester City in front of a huge RB Leipzig crowd as they are going to hope to see if we can spring a surprise here in Germany and claim all three points. However, following on from that titanic clash against Bayern Munich, fatigue has ripped through my squad at the worst possible time, meaning that I've had to make several enforced changes and that means speaking of Lukeba he does come back into the starting 11 to partner Simakan at the heart of my defence as Hartman comes in on the left hand side of my defence as well Siebald gets an unlikely start in midfield to partner Hallmand in the centre Baumgartner comes in in place of Elmas who drops to the bench Danny Olmo looks like he will not last the full 90 minutes here as Paulson comes in up front in place of Sesko also drops to the bench and partners Openda up front so here we go then this is a big game could you imagine back to back wins against Bayern Munich and Manchester City that would really put a marker down for what we hope to achieve this season Henriks nice short pass into a pender who's been forced to come deep here with the Manchester City press but he's managed to hold on to the ball and he finds Seawald who's going to try and bring this one forward plays it into Danny Almo of course everything that we do positively goes through the Spaniard Henriks now out to the right hand side Henriks is going to try and ghost past guy does do that plays it into Paulson on his head what a head and what an even better save from Edison. Jack Grealish now for City in their first foray into our half. And in their first foray, Haaland manages to skip past Simakan and now drives to the edge of the box. Looks to fire a ball back in. It is Lukeba though with the big header away. De Bruyne though gets there in place of Seawald. And now Bernardo Silva keeps the ball alive here. Hartman doesn't do enough to win the ball back though. Foden now has it, but Hartman on the second attempt just about manages to win the ball. And we just about managed to wriggle clear, but we don't get very far here as Grealish plays in Haaland. And you cannot make mistakes stakes like that at the highest level too easy for Manchester City to unlock our defense and our defensive woes continue here in the opening 16 minutes so poor I thought we'd managed to get ourselves out of trouble and then we just ran straight back into it a ball through from Grealish straight into Haaland and of course he will do the rest the former Borussia Dortmund man coming back to haunt us here in Germany he fires Manchester City into a 1-0 lead well, Man City have their tails up now they are pressing us so high as you would expect them to but Lukeba has managed to dance his way away from the press and he's gone past two players really nicely done from the young Frenchman now Paulson has it he's going to try and see if he can go down the line into that man Danny Almo who shifts onto his right tries to find his way through past two players he's just squeezed out of it though Manchester City holding firm at the back Bernardo Silva blocked off by Paulson really nicely done from him and now he plays it into Seawald Seawald is going to try and see if he can play it down the channel into a pender lovely reverse pass here a pender into the box a pender to strike with his left big save from Edison well Lewis Appender running the channels exactly like I want him to as Danny Almo flings the ball in there to no avail but he will get a second opportunity to put it back in the box as he does close it back in a pender though just puts it over the bar we've got just over five minutes remaining until the end of the first half and Manchester City once again are going to bring the ball into our half here we've had one or two half chances but we haven't been able so far to unlock a stubborn Manchester City defence as Hemrix brings it out of our defence and we're going to try and see if we can make a change to that right now Baumgartner plays it down the channel looking for Hallmand He's not able to get there ahead of the left back though. Well, as we begin the second half here, it was a really tough opening 45 minutes. Manchester City had the better of the chances of the two teams. 
and they took the lead, and it's a lead that they've been able to hold on to. Can we do more to try and see if we can find our way back into this game? Akanji, under a bit of pressure from Appenda, manages to wriggle away from that pressure, though. Feeds it into Kevin De Bruyne, out wide to the speedster Carl Walker, who plays it down the line into Bernardo Silva. Checks back inside, goes back to the Englishman Carl Walker. Carl Walker wriggling around here, trying to find some space. He's blocked off, though, by Danny Almo, and then just bundles him off the ball. But Hartman manages to escape, and he plays it down the line into Paulson. Paulson tries to lay it off to Danny Almo. He's not going to beat Carl Walker for pace, though. Ruben Diaz. Back to Gaia. It's been all Manchester City here in the opening 15 minutes off this second half as uh, Phil Foden now tries to see if he can unlock our defence. Gaia manages to find his way into the box here. Gets past my right back. Plays it into Bernardo Silva. Guilacci makes a massive hash of that and eventually just about manages to get onto the second one and onto the third. My word, we breathe, breathe a sigh of relief. How on earth did we keep that one out of the back of the net? Danny Olmo again into Seavald. Seavald's going to go down the channel into Paulson, who's managed to find himself in an onside position. Checks onto his right, but he's just bundled out by that pace of Carl Walker yet again. Well, here we go then. Desperate times. Call for desperate measures. We are calling on the Calvary here. Several changes with about 20 minutes to go here to try and see if we can spark some sort of life into our attack as Paulson is going to try and throw this one into the box. Looks for the ball into one of my attackers, but unfortunately couldn't quite find him. But he will get a second opportunity. Plays it into Baumgartner, who Puts it onto his right, fires up a strike from distance and ends up placing it high and wide. Into Haaland, City looking to try and see if they can put the icing on the cake here and try and see if they can double their lead here in Germany as Grealish manages to wriggle away from a couple of different challenges of my defenders and somehow still manages to keep hold of the ball. Plays it into Haaland in the box, he's held up but he does enough to get past by defenders but in the end Gualachi pretty easy for him and that's, uh, that's actually a pretty decent clearance in the end and now Paulson can try and bring this one forward he's got an on-rushing run of Sesko just played it too late it was a wonderful ball but Sesko was miles offside Bernardo Silva being chased down by Xavi Simmons on as a sub Carl Walker keeps hold of the ball for Manchester City we continue to press high we haven't let our heads drop here but it's just that little bit of quality in front of goal and in the final third that we seem to be lacking here today but Sesko wins it back and gives it into Baumgartner and Sesko has the opportunity now to drink the scores level and Sesko does does do just that. A brilliant finish with just two minutes remaining on the clock. Look at the celebrations in front of the corner flag. He goes and runs in front of the fans. Even I'm getting involved. The subs, everyone. My word, what a way to end this game. The crowd have gone absolutely nuts. Well, once again, it was that Gagan pressing. Just high line pressing from the front. And it was Sesko who won the ball back. Baumgartner laid it back into his path. And he just drove into the box on as a substitute. The fresh legs to get away from the tired Manchester City defence. Levels it up here, one all. And with that being the last attack of the game, the referee calls time on what has been a very end-to-end -end tie here in the Champions League group stage. This man, Benjamin Sesko, coming to our rescue in the dying minutes of the game to secure a point here in Germany as it finishes. One all. Well, just when I thought Manchester City had the edge on us in terms of the quality going forward, Benjamin Sesko steps up when I needed him to and denies the English Giants with a dramatic late equaliser. I've put a lot of faith in the young man since becoming manager of RB Leipzig. He's only 20 years of age and he has displaced Paulson in my starting 11. He scored in all competitions so far this season and he is now my top goal scorer with four goals to his name I wonder what the future holds for the exciting young Slovenian and I wonder what the future holds for us in the Champions League as we are second favourites to go through but with us still now being level on points with Manchester City I am actually fairly confident that we might be able to pip them to the post and potentially top this group. Let's see. However, in other news, I made a pledge at the very beginning of this career mode that I wanted RB Leipzig to be a team that would hone and develop young talents at the club. And with us not really having too much to show for ourselves here in our own youth academy, I decided to see if I could set up a few different scouting networks across Europe to try and uncover some of the best gems in world football. And interestingly enough, I think I may potentially have found the very next Thomas Muller a little bit closer to home, and it is this man Fabian Bush he's only 16 years of age but he's got a potential rating of 94 he can play central midfield central attacking midfield and up front plus the fact he is already valued at 750 grand despite only being 16 years of age he is a player I definitely want to sign to my youth academy now with him only being 59 rated overall I'm not quite sure he's ready to make the step up to the senior team just yet however despite him just being 16 years of age as you can see he already has a few stats that are in green what does the future hold for the young German and if we can get him to follow the right training and development plan I think there is no telling what this young man could potentially achieve in this career mode for now though it's time to get back to the football and we are getting back to winning ways with a 
thumping 5-1 victory at home against Bochum. Sesko getting on the score sheet twice. Elmas, Xavi Simmons and Lukeba once again to secure a famous victory here at the Red Bull Arena. But unfortunately, frustration follows as we are held to a 1-1 draw away from home against Darmstadt. Our good form continues in the Champions League, though a 3-1 home win against Radomiak Random is followed up by a thumping 4-0 victory back in the Bundesliga. And we finish off this nice little run of games with another victory, this time securing our path through to the next round of the DFB Bokal as we beat Rostock 2-1 away from home. We're through to the quarterfinals in that cup competition where we face off in a very winnable tie against Union Berlin in a competition that I believe we can go all the way in. We've now moved up to top spot in our Champions League group, two points clear of Manchester City. And I would say that we're sitting fairly comfortably in the Bundesliga in third place, just two points off the league leaders, Borussia Dortmund. And so now I think it's time for me to get back out on the pitch as we're going to be facing off away from home against FSV Mainz in our very next game. Again, a consistent run of Midweek games means that we have had a little bit of fatigue creeping back into the squad, and that is why there are several changes to my usual starting eleven. Gualachi keeps his place in goal. Delic comes in at right back. Simakan and Orban partner each other in defence with Hartman starting on the left. Schlager is partnered by Sievald in the middle of the park. Elmas starts alongside Danny Almo behind the two strikers, Chesko and Appenda up front. So with Mainz sitting in 15th place in the league so far, this is a game that we should be winning and we should be expected to win. However, as you well know from me in previous career modes, it is these types of games that I tend to struggle in, so I've got to just make sure that we stay professional when we get the job done here today. Into Appenda. Appenda comes central and he looks for a nice little ball into Danny Almo. He's going to try and see if he can find a ball down the left hand side, but doesn't manage to find it. Good defending in the end. Frustrating though, because if we'd managed to find that one, we would have been clean through here. But now they've got an opportunity to burst down the right hand side. Look at the pace shown by the attacker here. Bursts into the box. Simakan can do nothing, but Gualachi fortunately is in the way as he was not beaten at the near post, but it's been a fairly decent start here. In the opening 11 minutes from Mainz, as they've got an early corner here, can they try and see if they can turn the screw and get the opener, as it's flown into the box, and they do manage to get the opener. Defensively, an absolute shambles. We've just switched off in a game that we really should be switched on, and we should be winning, and we've gone and given away a really soft goal. Well, it was a ball in, and to be honest, we should have really cleared this away, a looping header. And in the end, it was Simakan who once again was beaten to it. He's had a really shaky start here in the opening 11 minutes. Frustratingly, Mainz just too big and strong for us. They lead 1-0. That's a Hartman on the left-hand side. Hartman going to try and see if he can find a ball central. And he does manage to find Sesko. And Sesko around the corner into that man, Danny Almo. Danny Almo to check back into Sesko. It was a good piece of build-up play. And we were unlucky not to put it in the back of the net. Denic now. Up from right back, plays it into Danny Almo, of course. Anything that happens is going to come through the Spaniard. Back into Almo, shifts it onto his right to strike. That is absolutely beautiful and nothing less than I expect from the best player on the pitch. Danny Almo lighting up the game once again. And fortunately enough for me, he brings us back on level terms. Well, he picked up the ball, got it back from the left back and just turned beautifully, gave himself the space and just curled it into the bottom right-hand corner. The keeper had absolutely no chance whatsoever. And Danny Almo continues his fine form. One all, Richter for Mainz. Into Amiri. Amiri, though, is blocked off by, of course, that man, Danny Almo, who's won it back in a really dangerous position and plays a lovely ball into Benjamin Sesko. Can he try and see if he can fashion an opportunity? It's really poor, though, from the man who leads the way in the goal scoring chart so far this season. I would have expected better from him in such a promising position. But Denic wins the ball back and plays it into Siva. Once again, this high line and this high pressure is proving to be the uh, opposition undoing here as Danny Almo tries to line up a strike on his left, force the keeper into a good stop. And once again, the Spaniard proving to be the difference here today. And it is going to be that man who's going to take the resulting corner. Fires it in. Looking for the head of my captain, Auburn. Uh, sorry, couldn't get on the end of it. But it will be the left-back Hartman who will be the man to pick up the loose ball. Fires it back into the box. Sesko back out to Schlager this time, though. He lines up a strike with his right straight at the goalkeeper. Easy in the end. On a Siwoo, I think that's how you pronounce his name, down the right-hand side. And he's managed to get past Hartman. And he plays a lovely ball into the goal scorer. But fortunately enough, we just about managed to put a block in there. And now Schlager can try and bring it forward. He was almost hacked down, but just about managed to continue his run. And Appenda now plays it into that man, Sesko. Sesko, once again, is blocked off. He's had a really poor game so far today, it must be said. And now Onisiwo will bring it forward for Mainz, who have been a lot more problematic than I anticipated so far in this game. Whitman now on the edge of the box. Hartman, though, does a good enough job of just holding him up, but not a good enough. As Richter now has it back into the goal scorer, who plays it over the bar. Well, at the start of this second half here, it is only 1-1 in a game that we really should be expected to pick up the three points from. We've got to pick up our performance here in the second 45 
and hopefully try and see if we can get back into the lead as Hartman now drives down the left hand side. Appenda plays it short. I wasn't looking for the ball into Hartman, but I have managed to find him. And now Sesco has it. And fortunately enough, Sesco manages to lift his spirits and lift his performance and drive us into a lead here at the start of this second half. Hartman, though, did all the hard work driving down the left hand side and laid it on a plate for the young Slovenian. Well, it was the pass from Appenda that I wasn't actually planning to play to Hartman, but fortunately enough, he had the wherewithal to continue his run into the box and he managed to pick out a pass into Sesco and Sesco surely it was so easy for him just to play it with the side of his foot into the back of the net 2-1 RB Leipzig Kraus for Mainz into Amiri out to the right hand side into Widmer Widmer back central into Kraus lovely little build up play here for Mainz so far but they aren't able to get past Auburn Auburn showing why potentially it is the right decision to keep him in the starting 11 Fernandez down the line though into Onosiwu Onosiwu tries to play it down the channel and once again Auburn is in the right place at the right time but then goes and gives the ball away in a really dangerous position but fortunately enough just about gets away with it and we just about managed to get a free kick he breathes a sigh of relief Dedic now to try and drive down this right hand side plays it across to Elmas Elmas to try and fling it into the back post what a ball what a goal that surely is that what a fabulous way to give us a two goal cushion and once again it is the man of the moment Sesco getting on the end of it but I've got to be honest it all came from the ball from Elmas absolutely pin perfect what a fabulous cross Potentially the best cross I've seen all career mode so far. And Sesco still a lot of work to do, to be fair, on the volley. Just picked his spot. Lovely finish. Lovely way to give us a 3-1 lead here. Round down the left-hand side. Plays it central into Xavi Simmons, who goes into another substitute in Paulson. Paulson finds Appenda. Appenda now into round. Round down the left-hand side. Checks back into Appenda. Straight at the goalkeeper. Another beautiful piece of play, though. And that is exactly what I would expect from the uh, attacking players that I've got on the pitch so far. But we keep the ball alive now. Dedic the right back to bring it forward. Dedic to try and line up a strike in the end. That looked like it was going on target, to be fair. And we get a corner out of it. And it's a corner that with Danny Olmo going off the pitch, Schlager is going to take. And he throws this one into the box. Looking for the big head of Paulson. Isn't able to find it, though. But the centre-back, Auburn, keeps the ball alive. Xavi Simmons turns onto his left. Lines up a strike. What a strike. But in the end, just drags it a little bit wide. I thought that was going to nestle into the top right-hand corner. Oh my word, he was just inches away, wasn't he? It does not matter though, because the referee calls time on what was a fairly routine win in the end. After a bit of a shaky start going 1-0 down, we showed great composure and determination to get ourselves back on track. That man, Sesco, scoring two goals here. His two goals proved to be decisive. As a full-time, we run out 3-1 victors. He continues his fine form, which keeps him at the top of our goal-scoring charts. Ten goals now scored in just 14 appearances. Seven of those coming in just nine Bundesliga appearances. After a shaky first 45 minutes, this man is coming alive in an RB Leipzig shirt this season. But another man, despite his stats not truly reflecting his performances this season, Danny Olmo is once again the man of the moment. He was the one that kickstarted started that performance and I've got to be honest I'm a little bit nervous because with him being 84 rated and with him being my best player and surely with the bigger teams in Europe sniffing around for a signature I'm a little bit nervous that I'm not going to be able to hold on to the 25 year old Spaniard for too much longer but Sesco proving once again that he doesn't want to be outdone by the Spaniard scoring two goals in the Champions League to give us a late victory against Radomiak Randon and with him getting on the score sheet yet again in our very next game in the Bundesliga we get another three points on the board beating Freiburg 2-1 and with us finally now being able to overtake Dortmund and the second place Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga for the first time this season we go top but of course who else is it going to be other than our title rivals Wolfsburg whom we're going to be facing off against next away from home a titanic clash at the top of the table and one that could have lasting ramifications here on our Bundesliga title fight and with it being such a big game it is a return to my usual and strongest starting 11 with just one exception and with Auburn unfortunately coming down with a little bit of fatigue our captain drops to the bench and it is the young Frenchman Lukebu who comes in to deputise to partner another Frenchman Simican at the heart of my defence journey now for Wolfsburg though at the start of this game to try and drive past Raum on the left hand side into Behrens and Gualachi forced into an early stop but Wolfsburg starting this game as they mean to go on trying to see if they can excite their home fans here as Juan Basaka the former Manchester United man seemingly now applying his trade in Germany unfortunately was a victim of a foul there but the referee has played the advantage and now Czerny has another opportunity to drive down the right hand side and go one on one with Raum I feel like it's going to be a ding dong battle between the two of them 
frustratingly for him, and fortunately enough for me, he does about manage to run it out of play. And we get a goal kick into Hallmand. Hallmand, though, manages to go past the challenge in the centre of the park here and plays it into Schlager. Into the man of the moment, Sesko. Out wide to Ram on the left hand side. Ram is going to try and play it across. Looking for that man, Danny Almo. Almost got there, was inches away from getting his head on it, but it was good defending in the end from Wolfsburg. And now it is three on three here as they're going to try and see if they can hit us on the counter attack. Behrens tries to go past the Keba, does manage to squeeze his way past him. Cherny now down the right hand side, plays it into Arnold. Arnold to try and ghost into the box here, but Lukeba comes across in place of Auburn, stakes his claim for the starting 11. A brilliant challenge from the Frenchman, but Wolfsburg keep up the pressure here and they play a nice pass into Kaminsky. Kaminsky now tries to play his way into Behrens, Behrens into the box, and in the end, it's a bit of a tame shot that the goalkeeper just about manages to push away for a corner. Well, it's been 26 minutes on the clock here and it's been all Wolfsburg so far, unable to carve out any opportunities, have we, so far. But Danny Olmo, the man of the moment, is the man who puts a challenge in, but Arnold still has it right on the edge of the box. It's Seeger now, plays it back into Gashari. Gashari now, out to Arnold. Back out, though, they are not able to get past my stubborn defence here, but they play it out wide to the left-hand side. Gaminski has it again. Wolfsburg keep it alive, though, but Hallman with the challenge. Now into Henriks, and now it's Elmas to bring it away here. I'm going to try and see if I can play this one into Appenda. Appenda has been fairly quiet so far in this game. He plays it into Hallman. Hallman, though, plays it into Sesko, the man of the moment, who can't manage to wriggle past the defenders. I thought he was clean through there, but frustratingly, it's another piece of good defending by Wolfsburg. Ruggiero now to bring this one out for Wolfsburg down this left-hand side. Checks back in to Gashari, and and now Kaminsky yet again down the left hand side. Simakan comes across though. Brilliant defending from the young Frenchman. But look at the press here from Wolfsburg. But Hemrichs manages to wriggle away. And look at the space now for Elmas to bring the ball forward. Can he try and see if he can play it into the path of a pender? It wasn't the ball that I wanted. I would expect better from the central attacking midfielder. Schlager now. End to end stuff here. Elmas round the corner into the right back. Hemrichs who goes into the box. And Hemrichs back out to Sesko who just takes the wrong touch. And in the end it's a big chance wasted. Meyer now on as a substitute for Wolfsburg at the start of the second half. Simakan though reads that one beautifully and plays it into Hallman, who does a really good job of just escaping around the corner and plays it into the right back Hemrichs who's been heavily involved so far and he lays up a strike on his left and in the end just puts it over the bar but my word he has been heavily involved looking for glory saw his name up in lights and was just inches away from doing so. Arnold for Wolfsburg, under a bit of pressure here from this high line and this high RB Leipzig press, and Hallman wins it back for us, plays it into Danny Armo, who's been uncharacteristically quiet so far in this game, looking for the overlapping run of Raum, manages to find him, and Raum now is going to try and ghost down the left-hand side, plays it into the man of the moment, Sesko, chests it down, puts it onto his right, lines up a strike with his right, and in the end forces the keeper into a save. Hallman. About uh, 20 minutes left remaining on the clock here for one of these two teams to try and see if they can find a breakthrough here. And it may well be RB Leipzig with Sesko! Sesko's done it again! This man is on absolute fire! We have a potential wonder kid here who could reach heights that potentially he didn't even realise he could reach. Unbelievable stuff here. Sesko was played through by Elmas on the edge of the box. He's still a lot of work to do. And look at that for a finish. Just curled it round the goalkeeper. Gave him no chance. He continues his fine form. 1-0. Well, in such a big game, our bright shining star coming to the fore yet again. My word, there is just no stopping this young man this season. Goes into Schlager. Schlager around the corner into Hallman. Hallman's going to try and play this one over the top. Looking for the man of the moment, Sesko. Who just couldn't get on the end of it. But with about 10 minutes remaining on the clock here, we've just got to make sure that we hold firm. See if we can keep hold of this clean sheet. As Sesko almost intercepted that pass there. But we've got to make sure we do a professional job. As this will be an absolutely huge three points if we can hold on to them. But wan down the right-hand side plays a nice little ball into Sir who caused me a lot of problems in the first half but has been fairly quiet so far but Wamba Saka now goes into the box but Lukeba comes across with an almighty challenge what a brilliant piece of defending from the Frenchman and now Danny Armo down the left hand side plays it down the line into Paulson on as a substitute and now Paulson into the box here plays it across into Sesko he gets his second of the game he gets our second in the dying seconds there is just no stopping this young man this season in electric form he gets his 10th goal in the Bundesliga so far this campaign and that gives us an absolutely huge three points in the fight for Bundesliga glory this season. It was an unbelievable counter-attack and Paulson had the wherewithal just to lay it on a plate for Sesko and he is not going to miss from that angle in the type of form that he is in so far this season. Smashed it into an empty net, doubled our lead. 
2 0. Well, Benjamin Sesko, take a bow. Your two goals have been the difference maker here today as the rest of the RB Leipzig players celebrate. As a full time here, it finishes Wolfsburg 0, RB Leipzig 2. It's a huge win that puts daylight between ourselves and Wolfsburg, who have now dropped down to fourth place. And another two huge goals for this man, Benjamin Sesko. He's 10th in the Bundesliga, he's 15th overall in just 17 appearances this season. My word, what an incredible start to the season for the young 20 year old. But that is going to be that for the end of today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you everyone for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.